we are coming to people from Hamilton, Bermuda, and imagine that Miramichi. all the way in Miramichi and Bermuda, <laughs> as if we were as if we were next door to each other, just like nothing. The world has become a lot smaller, hasn't it? It has. So welcome everybody to day one, the official start of our five pound challenge. And we're here today with um, Rob McGowan from Life Radio, and uh, we're going to begin. So yesterday we had a great introduction. And so today we're just going to dive right in. So, um, so welcome, Rob. So I'll let you begin with how things are going so far. Good, good. I got up this morning, did a little dance, made a little coffee. Had some water, some water, extra water. <laughs> <laughs> Filmed a little bit of it. We'll try to get it up later. We'll see. <laughs> we might have to take a second look at that to see how that turned out. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, you froze. froze up. There you are. Back again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My so bad. we're starting. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do the five. I picked five things out of the challenge. One from each thing. And. And I guess we'll talk about that and, and you can tell me whether it was a good thing or whether that was what you meant by the challenge and how it worked. Yeah. Is that good? That's okay. Go right, right. in. I'm in the doctor's office. We got it made. <laughs> you are in the office today, you know? Perfect. Perfect. It's a good spot to be. So on the first part of the chart for the checklist, you could uh, choose forgiveness, self-service, self-love, gratitude, compassion. So today I serve service and uh, to serve others with love. So every day on the radio, I do, uh, I try to come up with things that, uh, to try and change the world and talk to people and do things. So I'm working with a group now that, uh, there's a lot of people who are lower in income and money. And when, on top of that, when you your family gets sick or you get cancer or, you know, you lose your job and there's things you can't do, tra even the simplest thing like transportation becomes hard. So I'm working with this group to put this core of people together that has funds to, uh, supply drivers, volunteer drivers and money so that they always can get to the hospital and get to their things they need to do. So that's that's my working towards service and love. That was the, the one thing I did out of that part of the list today, trying to figure out. Well, that's great, Rob. You know, it's really, this is what it's about is being able to be of service and, you know, the feeling that it gives us knowing that we're able to help others. And this sounds like a great project actually, you know, for so many people that have had difficulties with transportation issues, especially living in a small, small rural community. So that's great. And uh, you'll need to share more with our viewers about that as well. Oh, as yeah. maybe well, we're gonna, we have an interview we're doing and we'll, we'll post that up online. People will be able to see the interview and see what it's all about and how it'll all work. So uh, that'll be coming up in the next couple of days. Once I get it edited, get some more time. <laughs> we'll put that together. So maybe we'll just dwell a little bit moment there more on this whole concept though of loving awareness and then we'll get to the rest of your checklist so you know today's challenge if people might have their little checklist with them for today but when we look at loving awareness so expressing forgiveness service self-love gratitude or compassion so you know in the time that you've been serving with life radio you know how does this theme how do you feel this applies i guess to life in general. You know, we're here for a five pound challenge. And I know many participants are here because they think they want to lose weight. You know, this is a five pounds, but how does loving ourselves, how do you think that ties in to weight loss and perhaps body image? Well, when you start to feel good about yourself, you, uh, you start thinking, well, I want to be fit. I want to be able to do the things that can make a difference in the world. So when you start every day, incrementally trying to do something in a kind way, you start to realize it's hard to do it unless I'm in good shape myself. So you start thinking more towards how do I make my inner self better? So making the inner self better, because really what is our physical body, right? Our physical body is a shell, you know, and, and so many people kind of look at this outward appearance, but we know, and I've seen time and time again, that when the heart is good and, and the heart is full of love and, and self-compassion, that the external appearance of the body actually starts as well. It starts to change. I believe that. Start to feel it, see it. Makes a difference for sure. And the concept of self-compassion, I guess, is that something for yourself through the years? Um, can you think of times or how that's kind of applied, like being gentle with yourself, like maybe not taking yourself so seriously? Um, knowing that you're doing the best that you can right now, given the circumstances or the situation that you're in at the moment. 
Oh yeah. Well, life is hard. I mean, there's, there's things, even when you're trying to do the best you can and the, the greatest things in the world, people around you and things around you will, will always be trying to knock you down. It's just, you got to sort of just stand back up and say, okay, that's okay. Know what's coming and be prepared for it. You know, get yourself in the best physical mental shape. So as these things hit you, you know, they don't tear you down so much that you, you know, you get to that place of depression in your life. Yeah, because I think every day we all see it that there's a lot of there's a lot of negativity around us. You know, there's a lot of things that can bring us down. But when we are strong, you know, when we get grounded, uh, when we get grounded, you know, with spirituality as our core, whatever those foundations, our values, you know, our family, when we get grounded, we are strong, right? We can weather the storms. It's yeah. true. Because no matter what happens on the other side, there's something better. And the only way to do it, to go is to move forward, right? So, you know, many times I find people, when we talk about loving awareness, people kind of have difficulty because they get caught back into the past. You know, they've tried something before when it's weight loss, you know, they tried Weight Watchers or they tried tops and, oh, it didn't work. But I think if we get caught in that negative thinking and that negative cycle, that will bring us down. So we have to think of what forward momentum is going to look like and how we can love ourselves today and, and stay strong today. That's true. Yeah. And uh, definitely, definitely put something in your mind to get you on a better, better trajectory and start to put people around your life that lift you up. Uh, too many times we, we get people around us that are always, you know, making you feel down, down, down until you get to this point. It's like, you don't understand why you're, what's wrong with you. <laughs> it's not it's maybe maybe listening to everybody around you you need to start putting more positivity around your life yeah you know they say that we become like the five closest friends that we have and if we surround ourselves with you know negative nancy's or those that are you know kind of wanting to you know be against all our best efforts you know the friends that just want you to go and for the snack food or the friends that want you to go only on a friday night for all the drinks uh, or the friend that's always talking about themselves in the conversation and then there's no time for reflection or listening so we really have to pay attention to those sorts of things because our friends uh, do impact our environment and we have a choice of how we want to continue 100 percent, 100 percent. So I just wanted to share one thing on the self-compassion note, you know, there's for one of the things for me that I've been saying now for a couple of years is to be gentle with myself because most people I'm, yes, I'm a doctor, but I'm an A type personality. I want to do everything. I want to get out there and help all of you as much as I can. But when I think about being gentle with myself, so there's a kind of a little prayer that I say every morning. And so I put my hands on my heart and I say to myself, and, you know, it's taken me a lot of years to be able to say that, but it's Tiffany, I love you. You know, uh, Tiffany, you are doing a good job. And Tiffany, you're beautiful. And when I think about this, as I say those words, I, I learn to say it easier when I envision my, myself as a young child. Because if we look at kids and we think, oh, a five-year-old child, you know, what would we say to that child? You know, if that child fell or if they if they did something unintentionally to hurt themselves, we would be so gentle with them. And when we start to picture ourselves as young children, then we truly can say those things that what I would say to myself if I was five years old, that you're beautiful. I love you. And you're doing a good job. You're doing the best that you can. And to me, that is my self-compassion. And that's my moment of self-love. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, we definitely need those things in our, our, our daily routine, don't we? Right. And if and you don't have them, put them in, put them in, because if right. you don't start somewhere, your, your day just starts on a downhill trajectory right off the bat. <laughs> Might as well start on the way up. And that's what, as I go into the next step, remember of, uh, we're going to talk about Rob's five, but the mindset practice is looking at, you know, your mantra of what you're looking forward to. And so what I just said, that's my mantra of the day is Tiffany, you're beautiful. You're doing a good job and I love you. So now we'll shift back from loving awareness because you all want to hear about Rob's other five or Rob's other four for the day of what's going to, what he's going to do for his uh, checklist of the and day. I, and I decided since we have five days and there's five on each checklist, I'm going to pick one different one each day so that I can sort of go through the different ideas and get a aspect of it all. 
So for the second one, today I picked uh, things that trigger you. So I was really thinking about this the other day. And one of the, the big triggers I have is fatigue. I, I work a lot of hours, day and night, and I'm, I'm constantly working. I work all day trying to figure things out. I work in the afternoons building on a, on a house fire that had tore my house down. But so I'm, I'm constantly working. Then at night, I'm working towards another profession of trying to do some art and things. So around the clock work. But sometimes when I'm working and I get fatigued, I'll, I'll start to lose a sense of control. You know, I'll get angry or upset easier than I should. So I have to learn to sort of level myself out and, and make sure I'm resting enough between each thing and putting only the hours I can do without getting to the point of exhaustion all the time. So that one of my triggers I know is exhaustion. So I have to pay attention to it. And that's what I'm working on. So you're, it sounds like you're becoming aware now you recognize I'm tired. And mm -hmm. so then making that association, that pairing that maybe I'm a little bit more short in temper because I'm just fatigued. Yes. Yes. It's terrible. It, it does get tiresome at night. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody just came in for a minute. Oh, there they are. And so now that you identify that trigger, do you have some place to get yourself back on or how that you'll, is it how, you, no, you know, but I, I've made it part of my routine at night when I'm going through my stuff to, to say, was I tired today? You know, was there something that I worked too many hours this week? Where did I have a break to make sure I could not get to that point? Uh, did I lose my temper at some point? Did something happen during the week or was I pretty calm and neutral and stayed pretty level? So paying attention to it is all I'm doing now, just sort of keeping a record of what, what's going on in my life. And that's wonderful. Like when we pay attention and this is why I've, I encourage people to do the journal, you know, because at the end of the day, you can look back and reflect about what it is that went on, you know, what I might want to, you know, how I can maybe behave a little bit differently for the next day. So thanks. Thanks, Rob. So what about your next step, your narrowed feeding window? Okay, well, this one, <laughs> the, the one I thing I didn't do, which I started today this morning, which isn't as easy as it seems, is uh, doing the liter of water deal. So I got up this morning and drank so much water, and I was like, wow, this is a lot of water to drink <laughs> for me. I usually get up, have my coffee, I'm on my way, but I, I put that water in, and uh, we'll see how that goes, but that's the start of the day. Anyway, did a little stretching, and dance moves a bit and drank a bunch of water. So even exercise, just a hair, just to, just to make it a little bit fun. Okay. So that would be part of your joyful movement that you've done today then? Yeah. To yeah. <laughs> and then with your other one, so rest and recovery, how are you going to uh, accept the challenge there today? Oh, that's a good one. I don't know. That one I'll, well, oh, I think I, what did I say I was going to do for that? Oh, I know what it was. That one at nighttime, I'm going to try and get to bed 45 minutes earlier than what I have been doing. Because lately I've been going past my limit. I've noticed I, I had set times where I was trying to be in bed and asleep by 10 o'clock. And I've been pushing at 10, 30, 11, 11, 30, just, just getting a little more work done, a little more work done instead of forcing myself to say, no, skip the work. You get more work done in less time if you're in better shape. So that, that's the goal is to uh, condense the time, the work time down to something that's manageable and, and it's not killing me. Yeah, because rest is is key, right? You know, when we're able to get enough sleep, we focus better the next day. So just like you said. Well, it sounds wonderful, Rob. It's great to hear of your how you're accepting this challenge, how you're going public for all the others that are out there. So the challenge to I put out to our viewers for today, for those that are in the challenge, is I want you to post down the number one tip that you're just going to start with. Because remember, there's like 25 tips here, okay? And it doesn't, you don't have to even stick with all of those ones, but pick your number one. And I want you to post this in the link below uh, because we all get a little bit of inspiration when we can see how others are getting inspired. Rob has shared with us his top five, but I just want to hear today your top one. So any um, closing comments or anything for us today, Rob? Uh, well, think of when you get up in the morning, right? You're, you're going to run into all kinds of things over the day. You're, people are going to be nasty to you. People are going to say mean things to you. 
Some people are going to say nice things to you while really they're saying bad stuff behind your back. <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of terrible things going to happen in your day and you're going to realize it. And somebody's going to honk the horn at you. Somebody's going to say, you know, hurry up in line. Your boss is going to say, why haven't you got this work done? Whatever it is. But just remember, none of that means anything except when the way you think about it. So when, you, when you're going through it, just think, that doesn't really mean anything to me. That's not has nothing towards my goals at the end of the day. What am I going to do that's going to make my day better? And never mind what everybody else says to you or what you're feeling from other people. That's wonderful, Rob. And if I can use a line that you frequently like to on your show, is if we could just remember to always stay humble and kind. Yes, yes. The mantra for sure. Stay humble and kind and you'll change the world. <laughs> all right, awesome. thanks, so, thanks so much, Rob. And everybody, we will stay tuned again. We'll see you all tomorrow at noon. And make sure you post some stuff up there. I got to read this stuff. I'm curious now <laughs> what everybody's doing and uh, how, it's, how it's working for them. And we're looking for, we're looking for some videos. Yeah, oh, yeah. For some videos. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, guys. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks Bye. Thanks, Rob.